All right, so uh, not only is this my first time being here, but this is also, a, I'm the first one presenting, so it's a little, a little intimidating. But uh, I work for Focus Designs, and we make a self-balancing unicycle, which my coworker here is riding around. Uh, I do the marketing and business development for uh, Focus Designs. And that is Dave Marshinsky, our uh, COO, I believe. <laughs> So uh, a lot of you are probably wondering what, what exactly is it, why, why is it needed, uh, where did it come from? Uh, it is considered a light electric vehicle, so in that market segment you're going to see things like electric scooters, Segway, e-bikes, things along those lines. Um, why? Uh, I'll go from two different aspects. We're viewing this as a commuting companion. So what that means for you, uh, as if you're taking public transportation to work, so into Portland or something like that, Maybe you have to wake up, uh, maybe you drive to the bus stop or the train station, or maybe you wake up earlier just to walk there. Um, and what this is, is it's going to either replace that car for that short little trip to that, that station or, or allow you to wake up later in the morning so you can just ride that at four times the speed at which you could walk. Um, so this is really kind of starting to take off internationally. We're seeing those markets where uh, public transportation is, is really kind of already developed. Um, here in the U.S., we are seeing a lot of the more affluent, wealthier individuals purchase it as kind of a novelty item. Um, and then they're starting to find that there, there is the use for what I call the Saturday errands. So if that's running to the bank or uh, running to go pick up an extra light bulb because one just burned out in your home, um, those sorts of things that uh, it doesn't require you carrying three watermelons home for that party that you just are throwing that night. Um, so where is this? We're really uh, targeting Seattle, Portland. Uh, San Francisco, New York, places again where that uh, public transportation is already developed. Um, so for those of you that are into technology and uh, all the gizmos and gadgets and specs, here are all our different specs. Um, it only weighs 27 pounds and it's small enough to fit in the overhead compartment of, a, of an airplane. So it's super lightweight and portable. That's one thing that we find is people that purchase electric bikes or Segways, uh, they, you know, where exactly are you supposed to park that? Um, how do you attach it? Where do you park it? And so with this, you can take it to work. You can put it underneath your desk. It, it's portable. It goes with you. Uh, its top speed is 12 miles an hour. A lot of people, people say, does it go faster? Personally, I don't want to be going faster uh, on a single wheel device if I were to hit a really big bump. <laughs> but we, we're still working on that. Uh, so it's a 1,000 watt DC brushless motor. That's extremely quick. It's just torque is right there. You accelerate extremely quickly. Um, and it, it balances forward and backwards. There is a learning curve, I'm sorry, and that's to the, you have to learn how to balance to the left and right. So if you've ridden a, fir a bicycle, if you've ridden a skateboard, uh, if you wakeboard, any of those, it, I mean, just assume that there's going to be a little tiny uh, learning curve and it's associated. Is it five minutes already? Okay, I don't know. I've never. Uh, the one thing that I'm really amazed about is uh, we are able to support riders up to 325 pounds. So uh, yeah, if you have a backpack and you decide to uh, go to basic training, you can carry all your stuff and it'll support you <laughs> through all of that. And the last thing is it has regenerative braking. And I think that's so awesome because we hear about regenerative braking on Teslas and Priuses where it'll put energy back into the battery as you stop. But ours, if you're going down a, a hill, you're actually charging. You don't actually have to be stopping. Um, I think the hill grade is about 3 or 4%. That's where it's actually self-sufficient. Um, and, and it'll just keep on going and charging. So if you're in Portland and you can't physically um, charge it, you don't have that hour to charge, you can just go up to the zoo uh, and ride down that hill and zoo bomb it. <laughs> so uh, this is our third generation product. We've been featured on Mythbusters, Shark Tank, um, and then we are proud and not proud of Tosh.0. Oh. Um, <laughs> That's up to you to watch. So uh, the guy that invented this, his name's Daniel. He used to work for a company called US Digital. And I guess one day he literally rode into work with a modified unicycle. He had a, a, um, a drive chain motor on it. And he just kind of came in with wires running into his backpack where his batteries were. And he said, how cool is this? And everyone really liked it. So he kind of went off and did his own manufacturing. And he created the second generation one. Uh, which was uh, had the motor integrated actually into the wheel. Um, and then the batteries were up here. But that uh, caused a bit of stability issues as you were turning. Um, so our third generation one, the batteries are actually more closer to the center of gravity. They're actually in the frame itself. So that was a huge standard um, or a huge you know, thing for us. Um, because the batteries are now in here, we are. Oh, that's it. OK, good. Very gentle. 
All right, so. Questions? Uh, $1,800 for that question. <laughs> it's a third the price of a Segway, I'll just say that too. No, uh, we, we've been talking with him. We think it would be really cool to see him on it, but we haven't worked that out yet. Yeah. Yes. How do you distribute them? Very good question. Uh, we're, we're still in the process of setting up our, our distributor network. Uh, internationally, it's very difficult because not only are you calling some people that are you know, 10 hours ahead of you, um, but you're also talking to people that don't, have, don't speak you know, the English language very well. But, um, usually our best leads are the ones that come to our website and fill out our dealer application list. Um, but really it's setting up, finding those distributors who know connections other, over there or literally going direct to the store and trying to contact them that way, which is still a difficult process. Yes? Um, I don't, yep, yes. <laughs> I just see my, my coworker nodding, so I assume yes. Uh, in the back. Um, personally, I don't feel comfortable going through a Safeway aisle on one, but I have ridden it through the PDX airport. Uh, the carpet is kind of weird because it makes it, it slants your direction to left, so you constantly have to re-navigate to go straight, but um, they actually loved it. So I have, I can say indoors, it seems to be just fine. Um, yes, sir. What are the major, major differences from getting the Segway? Good question. Apart from the fact that it's extremely small, lightweight, and portable, um, uh, it, I mean, it is a little bit slower. That's not what we're advertising, but it's the fact that it's a third the price. Um, it seems, in many cases, it's, it's more useful because where are you going to park a Segway if you have to take it out somewhere? Um, I mean, I get, those are really the main differentiations. Um, and it's a seat. Why would you always want to stand around? You, some people eventually want to sit. Yes? I, so I'm visualizing I've got a backpack on or I've got my carry-on luggage on to go into the airplane yeah. where I can stow that, but how hard is it to adjust to having these weights like on my back or carrying a... a Good question. Uh, there is the learning curve associated with just learning how to balance yourself on it, and then there is a little bit of a learning curve of throwing a backpack on and having that. I've done it enough where I get, I'm used to it, so I, I mean, it, it does feel a little awkward at times, but it, it eventually comes second nature. Yeah.